Welcome to Chef DTV, where we've taken you to Seattle, Washington, Montreal, Quebec, Kitchener, Ontario. Today we are in Vancouver, British Columbia with Chef Brandon Owen. Today Chef Brandon is going to be showing us some of his own personal grilling techniques. Let's get grilling. So here we are in Chef Brandon's domain. Chef Brandon, who is the corporate executive chef of GFS British Columbia. Chef, what does all that mean? Well, what we do is we come into the culinary center here at GFS British Columbia and we work with our customers on menu development, recipe development, flavor profiling, and we go through all dishes from appetizers, entrees, desserts, whatever they want to work on. So you have all different products, you have, you have 3,000 products to choose from to show your customers. We actually have 15,000. <laughs> so you get to play every day. I get to play in the kitchen here every day working with our customers and do what I love. So I think we should go take a look at some of your beef items now. Let's go. So, Chef, we have all these great pieces of red meat back here. Yes, all certified Angus beef. So we have our strip loin. That's right. Nice marbling throughout. We have our ribeye. Very popular cut. And we have our beautiful tenderloin, which is my favorite steak. Hold it, hold it, this minute. Chef, oh, oh no. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Nice How to see you. Nice seeing you. Welcome to GMS BC. I didn't know you were going to be here. Well, I heard you say something about lean and tenderloin. we got to stop that right now. Have you ever wondered why people wrap bacon around tenderloin? There's a reason for that. And why is that reason? It has no flavor. It's all about the flavor, Chefy. Okay, so we have a strip loin, ribeye, and tenderloin. Explain to me a little bit of the difference. Okay, I'll do that. A strip loin, is just as it sounds, comes from the loin portion of the animal off the hip cut, okay? okay. Off the hind quarter. The ribeye comes from the front, mm -hmm. off the front right here, the rib section, yeah. and the tenderloin is that part of the strip loin. Okay. So, a tenderloin is naturally going to be tender, has no flavor. No juice, okay. right? But it's naturally tender. A strip loin and a ribeye are full of those little white specks called marbling. Right. Marbling gives the piece its juice and flavor. So now we're going to take these over to the other side. We're going to grill them off. It's really easy to make the perfect steak. It's very simple, Chef. Don't overthink it. You know, Chef, I'm a little nervous having the big man stand over my shoulder watching me make steak. I know. It's a lot of pressure having a butcher in here looking at you. And he gives you that look, and you never know with that look on his face exactly whether he's about to give you a compliment or whether he's about to get his butcher's knife out. Hopefully, uh, I see you at the end of the episode. <laughs> I don't like manhandling my steaks. No. I like quarter turning them. So what we do is we start off with one side, then we just actually turn it so we get some beautiful grill marks. When you're cooking steaks, you should only turn them four times. And quarter, once. quarter, over, and that's it. You almost think you knew what you were doing, chef. You seared the outside of that beautiful ribeye. When you bite into that, you're gonna say, Tim, you know what? You're right. The ribeye is the ultimate steak. What do you got going on here? You're, you're trying to you're trying to put some flavor in that tenderloin, aren't I'm, you? I am. I'm trying my <laughs> best. Trying, huh? I'm trying my so, best. So Tim. far, I watched you massage it because it I needs did. help, I and did. then you put some rub on it because it needs help, flavor. What are you doing? It, Tell it, me what you're doing. You know here. what? We've got a beautiful rub on there. We're searing it on both sides to keep the juices in. I like we're it. gonna finish it in the oven. I like it. Sometimes we get a little carried away some you know when we're we're cooking, is that we want to take it up and up and up. And sometimes it's just really nice to be able to taste all that meat. Simple is always the best chef Daryl as you know. It's a great you're starting off with a fantastic product with the certified Angus beef. It really doesn't need much more than a little bit of salt and pepper. It's got lots of marbling in there, which gives it lots of flavor, right, Tim? Yes. And we just grill it, and we're just gonna, a great way to just finish a steak without making it too complicated is to just make a little butter. So, Chef, tell me something. For the backyard barbecue who's enjoying a nice glass of wine while cooking, how does he know, how can he tell when his steak is done? Tim, it's all about touch. You wanna touch your steak, kind of give it a feel, and you can tell where it's at. Take your hand and press the outside of it. That's rare. Okay, that's, that's rare. rare. That's the way I like it. Exactly. Yeah. So you can see how it springs back really easily. Mm -hmm. Then over here is medium rare. See, it's still not as springy. Yeah. Then you go over to the other side, and as you can see, now it's a lot tougher. Right. Not tougher, but a stronger, right? Yes. It doesn't spring back as much. That's medium. You come all the way over here, feel it doesn't spring back at all. Right. Right? Yeah. That is well done. Well done. Now, again, folks, if you like your steak well done, eat your steak well done, but choose the right cut of meat. 
use the ribeye, use the strip loin, because those have flavor, they have marbling, they have juice. So our steaks are ready to come off, but there's one more important point that a lot of people tend to forget when they're grilling. How many times have we had a steak where you cut it and all the juice runs out into our mashed potatoes? So what we want to do is we just want to take the steak like this. We're just going to let them sit on there. Now, people always ask me, how long should I rest my steak? And the general rule for us chefs in the kitchen is a third of its cooking time. So if your steak cooks for nine minutes, you want to let it rest for three minutes. What that's going to do is allow the juices to stop boiling in the meat, come to a resting position, and then when you cut that steak, it's still going to be beautifully medium rare, and all the juices aren't going to run out, and you end up with a dry, tough steak, which is what we're trying to avoid here today. Exactly. What we've done with the cedar plank here is we've just thrown it on the broiler, just bring it up to temperature, let it char a little bit and smoke, and when we don't want to introduce too much smoke because it'll overpower the steak. So we just want to take that off and let our steak rest on top of the cedar plank. How good is that going to be? And the flavor is just going to come right through. A nice job on cooking the steak, chef. Great job, chef. So we're going to start off with the tenderloin first because that's what I'm so familiar with, okay? okay? Remember, that's going to be tender. So let's see if you get that flavor and juice that we all love in our steak. Okay, Tim, this is absolutely fantastic. Nice and tender, still a little juicy. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Chef, I would have to agree with you. It is tender. It's very flavorful because it has a great dry rub on it. Let's see how you like that ribeye. Now, as you chew, this is not a great bite. It's got a great bite. It's full of juice. It's full of flavor. I can tell. Look at the look on your face. You're speechless, Chef. It has a really buttery finish. It's absolutely spectacular. The strip loin. Most popular steak of all. Exactly. That, this, I think the steakhouse steak, right? The steakhouse steak. And again, what gives it that juice and flavor and tenderness is the marbling. I've learned something today. What's that, chef? That a little fat is not a bad thing. There you go. Fat is flavor. The ribeye tastes fantastic. 10 times better than the strip loin. And it tastes about 20 times better than the tenderloin. Yes! <laughs> Chef, you heard it here first. Chef Darrell admitted that a ribeye tastes better than a tenderloin. <laughs> Thank you, Chef Brandon of GFS, British Columbia. Thank you, meat god, Tim Petroni. I'm Chef D. Here's to great eating. And remember, you're worth it.